Yo, Kyle Lowe, an iPad OS 26 is here, or at least at the time of this recording, the public beta is out. And there's a whole bunch of things that got added to iPad OS, but the thing that interested me the most was this new feature called local capture and how this could revolutionize remote podcast recording. So typically, if you were recording someone remotely, you would fire up Zoom or RIP Skype and send them a link and then you would record your computer, but you would be recording the video coming in after it's been compressed and sent over the internet. But now with iPad OS 26, there's a new feature called local capture, which will record the camera and the audio in the iPad locally. And then that file can be sent over after the podcast recording interview whatever it needs to be. So this will work for anything pre-recorded that's gonna be edited. It doesn't necessarily help for live shows, but this is going to save people money from using services like Riverside or StreamYard or something. You just need an iPad. I think this feature may be coming to iOS and Mac OS 26, but I'm not 100% sure. During the WWDC announcement of the 26 OS updates, they only mentioned it during the iPad section and I'm not brave enough to install the beta software on my phone and my Mac that I use like for mission critical stuff every day. And you can use this tutorial if you're going to be the guest on someone's podcast or an interview on a documentary or something, or if you're producing a podcast or interview or something with a remote guest, you can send this video to your guests and also know what it is they need to do to get you a high quality recording of their camera and audio. So how do we get started? The first thing you need to do is actually add the local capture button to Control Center. So I've got my iPad here, I've got FaceTime up. I need to go to Control Center and then I need to add a Control Center button. So I'm gonna long press next to the buttons and then hit add a control. And I'm just gonna search for local and there's local capture. It added it right there. So now, I can be in a call in FaceTime or Zoom or Microsoft Teams, wherever. I'm gonna use FaceTime, but you can use any of these. And then we're gonna activate local capture while the call is getting started. And that will save a recording of the camera and the audio to the downloads folder in the files app. So I'm going to initiate a call from Lauren's computer to my iPad, and I'm gonna start local capture. So um, let's start this call. And I'm gonna put my AirPods in to just kind of minimize uh, the sound, and I these aren't the AirPods Pro, but they should sound a little bit better than just the mic because the mic can pick up the speakers as well. So definitely use headphones if you have them. You can also do an external mic with your headphones, which is great. Um, if you wanna see a video about how to kind of level up your recording for, for podcasts or interviews uh, into iOS, plugging in an external mic, or using an external webcam, leave a comment and let me know, and maybe I can make a follow-up video how to do a more robust camera and audio setup for these recordings. Okay, call's coming in. I'm going to join the call. So I'm in the call. It killed my uh, screen recording, but that's okay. I can just show you on the screen here. I'm also gonna mute the mic on Lauren's computer. Okay, so now I'm in the call. The, the camera's over here uh, that you see there, and I'm going to open up control center here and go over to local capture. So uh, it is showing me what my camera looks like and it just started the local capture. So now I am in the call, but I am also recording my camera and my audio that's going to the Mac. So hello, thanks for having me on the show. I would have, I'd also probably bring my iPad up a little bit higher um, so that I'm more uh, eye level with the camera. That is something that is kind of hard to show without without the screen recording, but I do have the local capture. So I am recording my local capture. I'm in the call. Um, we've been going for, I don't know, a, a minute or two. And we do our interview, we do our podcast, we do whatever kind of remote thing. And now it's over. Say goodbye, say thank you. And we can into the call. And when I end the call, it also ends the local capture. And now the local capture video and audio has been saved to the downloads folder in the files app. Let me turn my screen recording back on. Okay, I'm in the files app and in downloads, here is my local capture from just a little bit ago. So that video file was a minute and 12 seconds and that's about 140.8 megabytes. 
I can view it in VLC, iMovie, LumaFusion. I can even open it in Procreate if I wanted to. I think I want to open it in VLC here. VLC isn't showing me the metadata, but I can pull it up on my Mac and figure out what the bitrate is on this file. It got compressed as HEVC or H.265. Um, the data rate is 15 megabits per second, which isn't huge, but that is still better than like YouTube quality. So if this is going to get edited into something that's going into YouTube, it's still a little bit better than that. Okay, so if the file is being encoded at 15 megabits per second, that means uh, about 40 minutes would be about five gigabytes, which now you need to send this file to the interviewee or the, the you know the podcast host. Um, if you wanted to send this file via iCloud mail drop, five gigabytes is the maximum file size. So I could now hit the three dots and hit share and send it via email and email it somewhere. And if the file is more than like 25 megabytes, it's gonna say, do you wanna send this via mail drop? And if you send it via mail drop, it will upload and the receiver will have 30 days to download the video. Now, if you've recorded for more than 40 minutes and your file is bigger than five gigabytes, then you might need to look into something like Google Drive or Dropbox. Now, if you're the host, the podcast host or the interviewee, um, you can use Dropbox and they have the file request form. You can set up a file request form, send them the link to how to record this uh, interview and then the file request link that they can click on and then upload that file directly into your Dropbox folder. I know Dropbox isn't everybody's favorite, but if you needed something a lot bigger than five gigabytes to be sent, that's one way to do it. But that's it. That's how to record a really high quality remote interview or podcast episode or what have you just using iPad OS 26, a way to level up your recording over the built-in recordings in Zoom or Microsoft Teams or something, WebEx. And all you really need is an iPad and an internet connection. But again, if you wanna see a way to record maybe with a nice camera and a nice microphone and level up your recording for your podcast in your iPad, leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, subscribe, and I will see you later. Peace. Shoop.